Today our programme comes from St Helens Parish Church, Brant Bruton, Lincolnshire. And we're visiting for the third time a summer school for guitarists organised and presided over by Graham Wade. As usual we have an invited audience and later on we shall have one or two questions from members of the summer school which will be answered by our guest who began his guitar studies at the age of 11 and by the time he was 21 had twice won the international contest for guitar playing in Spain. Shortly after that he gave his first recital in Madrid and since then he's been busy touring and recording both in his own country and abroad. Now, ladies and gentlemen it gives me great pleasure to welcome back the Venezuelan guitarist Ricardo Fernandez Isnaola. Ricardo Isnola begins his program with three studies by Fernando Sor. They are respectively in the key of G major, B minor and A major.
three studies by Fernando Sor. Ricardo, I suppose most European guitarists are brought up practically on these early 19th century uh, guitar studies. Certainly. Did your early teachers put you for the same kind of repertoire? Oh, yes. Not only Sor, but uh, all the classical pre-romantic uh, material we have uh, of this time, uh, like Aguado, Carcassi, uh, Coste, etc. Yes. Yeah. I wonder, are there any um, <coughs> studies more or less of the same kind of standard, suitable for, for, let's say, the first two or three years of playing? Well, uh, Antonio Lauro is actually working on these kind of things. Very interesting because he's uh, trying to introduce the student into a polyphonic music through a series of studies written in polyphonic style, like small fugues or small canons. And uh, I think he's pretty well advanced in this. We all know the Leo Brewer studies, which are very yes, attractive yes, and rhythmic, and certainly. perhaps good grounding for some of the things like Laro does. Oh yes, and it's, uh, it really fills a big gap because the, the student traditionally is not really prepared when he, let's say, finishes his, his uh, technical education, let's put it that way, mm. to face the new compositions that are being written at the moment for the guitar because, of course, Sor and uh, Coste and uh, all the rest prepare you to a kind of uh, romantic or even post-romantic music, but not really for contemporary music. Yes. Yeah. Well, before we move on, shall we have some more Saw? Certainly. And uh, we'll have, in fact, the Rondo in C, Opus 22.
Rondo in C by Saw. Um, I gather this past year has been a particularly busy and interesting one for you, Ricardo, because apart from all your other things, you have your own radio program with the National Radio of Venezuela, and I believe it's not altogether unlike what we're doing now. Yes, it's a rather a new experience for me, working in a mass media, as it uh, were. And, uh, of course, we don't have the, the means you have for producing the classical guitar, but uh, besides, it's a completely new experience in Venezuela and probably in South America to produce a program of this kind devoted exclusively to an instrument, uh, its history, its composers, and so. Yes, do you stick just to the classical guitar? Well, um, I intended to do many things, you see, and I uh, still do, I still intend to do them, but uh, for the time being I am uh, keeping myself within the limits of the classical world, because uh, especially in, in my country it needs to be publicized. Uh, is there any significance in that for um, a young person who wants to study guitar in Venezuela? I mean. Are there music academies where he can study guitar? Certainly, and there are several very good teachers, including my first teacher, Manuel Perez Diaz, who heads the faculty or the guitar yes. in the conservatory, and he's a principal of another school where also the guitar is teached. Lauro, of course, also teaches, and several more. Yes, this is in Caracas, is it? Or? Caracas and uh, in other cities also. Yes. Yeah. Incidentally, I read a program note of yours uh, some time ago, which confused me completely. It said, now, was it, um, Venezuelan by birth, born in Cuba. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I left uh, Cuba very, very early, when I was a child, and uh, I, I adopted the Venezuelan citizenship, which is by birth, as, is, as it were, because uh, because I entered the country very early. But in fact, I believe you live really um, in Madrid. In Madrid, yes, yeah. since 1968. Yes, now a distinguished uh, compatriot of yours lives in Europe as well, Olivio Diaz, of course, who yes. lives in Rome. Ro I wonder why you all leave your countries and live in Europe. Well, I think you can relate it to the point we were discussing before. I mean, we really don't have the atmosphere to develop a career in this field, you see. So we must emigrate. To go back to your programs, what kind of works do you really prefer above all to do? Well I, well, I like Bach, of course, above everything else. And then I kind of have a atavistic attraction to Latin American music, yes. which I play very often, and uh, especially the uh, my own countrymen, like Lauro, Carreño, Borges, mm. and Ponce and Villalobos. Yeah. Mainly. Well, the next piece is, you're going to play is by Ponce, in yes. fact. Um, and in terms of the guitar repertoire, it's a relatively extended work, and it's the Sonata Mex Mexicana. I believe, actually, it was inspired by Segovia. Yes. Uh, this, as a matter of fact, was the first big work that Ponce wrote, and uh, Segovia enticed Ponce to write a work of this kind, giving him uh, four titles for four movements, uh, the first of which was, was uh, the little dance of the Mexican scarf, the second was the dream of the Ahuehuete, which is a Mexican tree, typical Mexican tree, the third was an intermezzo tapatio, which comes from a region, and then the last one, songs and dances from the old Mexicans. Thank you. 
Sonata Mexicana by Ponce. Well, perhaps now we could have the questions from some of the members of Graham Wade's summer school. Um, the first one we have comes from Linda Kerr. Do you think that South American guitarists play the music of Villalobos, Lauro and Barrios better than European guitarists? I don't think it has anything to do, really, where you are born. It's a question of uh, your natural identification with the type of music you play and with your musical training and uh, your general approach to this kind of rhythmic music. But it really, it really doesn't matter where you are born, in my opinion. Having said that, I think that sometimes we, at least I should say, I have the impression that many South American guitarists have a sort of a certain extra flair that we don't always manage when playing Venezuelan music. Well, it, it is possible, and of course it's evident that uh, long contact with uh, a certain type of rhythmic formulas and so make them like inborn in you. But it's a question of, I, I think it's training of one kind or another. Yeah. Yes. Well, the next question comes from Graham Wade. What are your opinions on the present state of the guitar repertoire? Is it really as impoverished as some critics believe? No, the thing is that we have, uh, we have uh, some holes in our repertoire that other instruments don't have. For instance, we are lacking in good romantic music. Like someone said, we, we have jumped from Tarrega to nothingness. Really good impressionistic music we don't have. I mean, if composers tend to treat the guitar like an impoverished instrument, it will continue to be one, you see? So the problem is looking into the future, I think, not into the past. Um, another question from John Bradley. Do you have any special method of learning new pieces? If so, could you explain how this method works? There is a uh, school of uh, teaching, which I think was begun by Karl Leimer, German pianist and teacher, uh, which emphasizes the work, the mental work without the instrument. I mean, uh, that is to analyze the piece in abstract, as it were, without the instrument, uh, and memorizing it so that when you reach your instrument, you already have it in your head. But it is not generally employed, of course, and uh, I don't know if it could be used to any good by a normal human being. But uh, uh, personally, I just study traditionally. I use part of this method just uh, until my capabilities tell me not to go on. And, uh, but uh, what you have to do is study at first very, very, very slowly. That's the secret, if there is one. Well, our last question comes from Ted Hartwell. Both Antonio Lauro and Raoul Borges wrote a lot of waltzes for the guitar. Is the waltz form particularly popular in Venezuela? Yes, it's as a matter of fact one of the traditional popular forms of expression of a Venezuelan popular composer. Of course it was introduced from Europe in the late uh, 19th century when the waltz was so popular in Europe. It went to America, not only Venezuela, but all of South America, and uh, it took some peculiarities, especially rhythmically, from the Negro influence, so present and so alive in popular music in South America. So the mixture is a rather interesting one, and as a matter of fact, they have created a new form of popular expression, which is the Venezuelan or the Peruvian or the, even the Argentinian waltz, which its characteristic rhythmic uh, syncopation and so, yes. Well, uh, Ricardo, we'll go back to some music now. And in fact, you'll probably be glad to know that 
Uh, Ricardo is going to continue his program by playing some music from Venezuela. And the next piece is uh, Ira de Danza by Innocente Carreño from his Sweet Criolla. The Dancer by Innocente Carreño. Uh, is Carreño is a contemporary composer. Right? Yes, he's uh, quite young actually. He must be in his early 50s now. And is he a guitarist? No, he dis isn't. He's a symphonic composer who he's only written this particular suite for the guitar that I know. He hasn't done anything else for the instrument. Not even with guitar and orchestra? No, no. Yeah. Mm. And how about the next two pieces you're going to play are indeed waltzes mm. uh, by Raul Borges. Um, now, is he a guitarist? Yes, he is already passed away. He mm. was the founder of the first guitar academy in Venezuela. He was appointed professor at the, at the conservatory. And uh, he was a very valuable personality because he was uh, self-taught, completely self-taught, with very old methods. So he did a tour of Europe around 1930 or something, and he discovered that there were new methods of playing the guitar, which unfortunately were too late for him to learn. So he began teaching the guitar according to these new schools, uh, Tatraga school, which uh, he just uh, knew theoretically. Mm -hmm. He didn't play like that. He couldn't. And uh, he formed pupils like uh, Alirio Diaz, for example, and Antonio Lauro, and my own teacher, Perez Diaz. So he was a uh, mm. yes. very significant man. Yeah. Well, perhaps now we could uh, finish the program. Here are these two Venezuelan waltzes by Raul Borges.
to Venezuelan waltzes by Raúl Borges. And they bring to an end this edition of the classical guitar, which has come from Graham Wade's summer school for guitar and Brant Bruton. I'm sure we'd all like to thank the Reverend Robin Clark for allowing us to use this truly beautiful parish church of St. Helens. And of course, I'd like to thank our guest from Venezuela, Ricardo Isneola, for playing and talking to us. So until next time, goodbye. The classical guitar was introduced by Michael Jessett and produced by Alan Owen. Our next programme will be broadcast on Saturday the 16th of December at 6.35pm.